Welcome to Dreamland Chronicles. I'm your host, Noah. Thank you for choosing to join us. Before we begin, find a comfortable position, set aside all your tasks, and let's enter a state of tranquility together. Firstly, let's take a deep breath together. Inhale slowly, then exhale gently. Repeat a few times, allowing your breath to become deeper and more rhythmic. Now, Use your senses to feel every part of your body. From head to toe, notice any tension or discomfort. Just acknowledge their presence without striving to change them. As you continue to breathe deeply, let's alleviate the tension in your body by gradually relaxing your muscles. Starting from the head, moving downward, gently release each muscle. Feel that comfortable, light sensation as if an invisible comforting hand is gently embracing you. Shift your attention to your thoughts. Don't strive to eliminate them. Just let them quietly float by like clouds drifting in the sky. You are merely an observer, unaffected by these thoughts. Let's take another deep breath, absorbing tranquility and peaceful energy. In this moment, you are safe, serene, and anything can wait until tomorrow. Thank you for participating in tonight's scientific relaxation moment. May you have a peaceful night and sweet dreams. Now, as you drift toward sleep, I'll hand the microphone over to Nicole to tell us a story. After Narcissus was born, his parents consulted an oracle to seek a divine prophecy about their child's future. The result of their inquiry filled the couple with great sorrow. The oracle revealed that their child would never see his own reflection, and if he ever did, he would die. In order to avoid this dreadful fate, Morris's mother removed all mirrors and reflective objects from their home. As time passed, Narcissus grew and Chuck Hansen me on the man. Although he had never seen his own face and didn't understand his own duty, everyone to self him marveled at his exceptional appearance. Many lovely young women pursued him, wanting to get close to him. But he remained indifferent and unresponsive. He coldly rejected the affections of one lovesick girl and arrogantly spurned the love of woodland nymphs. One rejected maiden raised her hands to the heavens and prayed, May he one day fall in love with someone who can never return his love, so he can taste the bitterness of unrequited love and self. The vengeful goddess heard this prayer and granted it. There was a crystal clear screen, untouched by shepherds, and spilled by wild beasts in the forest and unaffected by fallen branches or withered leaves from the trees that surrounded it. On that day, Narcissus, exhausted from haunting, happened to come to the edge of the screen. He was both hot and thirsty, so he knelt down, leaning over the water's surface, and scooped up a mouthful of screen water to quench his thirst. The water was refreshing, and it penetrated deep into his lungs, bringing him a sense of relief. He gently closed his eyes, when he opened them again. He saw his own reflection in the water, and the wave of joy surged through his heart. However, he did not understand that it was his own reflection. He believed it to be a beautiful water nymph within the spring, facing back at him. As a result, he unexpectedly fell in love with this beautiful water nymph's own reflection. He stared at the reflection in the water, motionless, resembling a statue carved from clouds to him. He admired the starlight glimmering eyes, the flowing curls like cascading spring water, the rosy cheeks slightly parted lips resembling rose petals, a round and charming face, swan-like neck, 
and the perfectly handsome physique reflected in the water. He leaned closer to the water, wanting to kiss the image in the water. His lips drew near, and the red lips in the water moved closer to him. His eyes sparkled with intense feelings of love, and the eyes in the water seemed to hold the same desire. However, just as their lips were about to meet, he only touched the cold water, causing ripples to form as the reflection disappeared. After a moment, it returned, once again enchanting him. He stretched his horns out towards the water's surface, longing to embrace this lovely figure. Seeing a pair of slender horns reaching out to him from the water, his heart beat rapidly as he passionately moved to embrace the figure in the water. His horns dipped into the as sensation of the water, creating ripples, and the image disappeared again. However, he remained unaware and continued to chase after the reflection in the water with even greater urgency. Narcissus tirelessly lingered by the spring, neither eating nor drinking, nor resting. His eyes were fixed on the elusive image in the water, but he couldn't drown there to it. He sadly called out to the dense forest by the spring. Now, you trees, you've been standing there for ages. If you ever witnessed anyone more unfortunate in love than me, is there anyone who, like me, pines away with longing? I love her. I can see her. But I can't have her. What saddens me is that there is no vast ocean between us, no towering mountains to keep us apart. It's just this shallow water that obstructs our embrace, cease willing to be held in my arms. And he pleaded with the shadow in the water. Who are you, after all? Please rise from the water. Why do you deceive me? Could it be that my youth and my parents repulse you? The nymphs love me. They pursue me. And it seems like you're not indifferent to me either. I reach out my hand to you. And you reach out to me. I smile at you. And you smile at me. When I cry, tears fall from your eyes. When I speak to you, your beautiful lips move. I can't hear your voice. No. Now I understand. This is my own self. This illusion can no longer deceive me. I burn with love for myself. I've tasted the bitterness. What should I do? I wish I could leave my own body. I wish my beloved could exist. But alas, this fate is inseparable from mine. He gazed at the shadow in the water, hot tires streaming down disturbing the water surface, making the image blur. He cried out, Don't go. Stay there. I beg you. If I can't touch you, at least let me look at you. In this way, Narcissus harbored an unattainable love for his own reflection and this love consumed his heart. Gradually, his cheeks lost their rosy hue. His body grew thinner, and he became emaciated. Youth's strength and beauty vanished from him. Yet, Echo still loved him. When he said and said, Alas, alas, Echo echoed his words with the same lament. Finally, one day, as he gazed at his reflection in the water, he uttered his final words, Farewell. Echo immediately replied, Farewell. He gently lay down on the grass, and the eternal night closed his eyes forever. As his spirit passed over the Strilhelm River and the underworld, he leaned over the ship's rail to catch a glimpse of his own reflection in the water. 
the woodland nymphs mourn Narcissus' death. They beat their crests and wept bitterly, and Ickle, too, wept sorrowfully. The nymphs grew tired of femoral tire to cream beneath his body. However, suddenly, his body was no more to be found at the spot where Narcissus had died. They discovered a blooming water lily growing by the edge of the spring. Its reflection clearly mirrored in the water. To this day, these water lilies still grow by the clear pool, casting their beautiful reflections in the shimmering waters. <laughs>